I'll start this video off by saying that pirates absolutely drank rum. They also drank beer, wine, brandy, gin, and anything else that would get them drunk. In fact, the buccaneers in the mid to late 1600s drank much more wine and brandy than they did rum. Today we'll take a look at what pirates drank and why. It's first important to explain the history of rum and where it came from. Rum was a byproduct of sugar production. Well, actually a byproduct of a byproduct, that being molasses. In the golden age of piracy, sugar was one of the most important cash crop exports being sent back to Europe. Sugarcane was not native to the New World, and the first sugar plantations were established by the Portuguese in Brazil in the 1550s. By the 1650s, sugarcane had spread from South America to the Caribbean. The cane was harvested by hand, the leaves were removed, and it was roughly chopped before it was put into a mill. The mill used a stone wheel to crush the cane and release the liquid sugar sap, which was collected, strained, refined, and boiled to remove the water. Sugarcane stocks didn't provide any shade and also blocked any available breezes, making it hell for the people who were harvesting it. The cane leaves were also sharp and would easily cut skin. For these reasons, the work was almost always done by enslaved people. Barbados sugar production was initially powered by Irish rebels or British criminals, but as the plantations grew in size, enslaved Africans were brought in to work in the sugarcane fields. During the refining process, molasses is left over. Originally, molasses was used for animal feed and fertilizer, but plantation slaves realized that if you fermented it, you got alcohol, which could then be distilled into what we know as rum. During the buccaneering period, which started around 1650, most pirates were taking Spanish prizes, and wine and brandy would have been much more common. We know this because the Spanish crown prohibited rum distillation, out of fear that the cheap booze would compete with Spanish wine and brandy. British and French rum production had not become so widespread, but eventually the liquor started to spread, and by the early 1700s, rum was everywhere in the Americas. It was cheaper and widely available. Keep in mind that during the time period, people almost never drank water, especially on a ship. The reason being that untreated water stored in barrels quickly developed algae and would make someone very sick. This was also the reason for the Royal Navy providing a rum ration. Originally, a sailor received a ration of one gallon of beer or a pint of wine each day. Neither beer or wine kept very good in the tropical heat of the West Indies, but the Royal Navy also allowed ships to substitute a half pint of spirits. Pursers, the men who kept their ships supplied, would have found rum to be both affordable and also would have preferred it to beer or wine, as it took less space to store. This half pint of rum was issued by itself, and sailors would prove it was strong by pouring it over gunpowder and seeing if it would still light. It's worth mentioning this was not grog, which is diluting the rum with a quart of water and later adding some lime or lemon juice. This practice was introduced in the 1740s, long after the golden age of piracy had come to an end. In any case, in the early 1700s, a lot of these Royal Navy sailors, who had developed a taste, or addiction might be the better word, to rum, were suddenly out of work after the War of the Spanish Secession came to an end. Some of these sailors went on to become pirates and kept drinking rum. Rum was also being frequently transported either north to the American colonies or east to the Old World. There were also colonial distilleries operating in New England which imported their molasses from the Caribbean. This was referred to as the colonial molasses trade. As sugar and molasses were sent north, new regular trade routes were established, which proved to be irresistible targets for pirates. Not only were pirates able to rob ships carrying rum, they were also able to steal the sugar and molasses and then sell it to the people who were distilling the rum. Years later, Robert Louis Stevenson would further cement the relationship between pirates and rum when he included the song, 15 Men on a Dead Man's Chest, Yo Ho Ho and a Bottle of Rum, in his novel Treasure Island. And Disney would further cement it with Captain Jack Sparrow's constant thirst for it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank my Patreons, 1660, Larry W., and Patrick Chamberlain. If you can help out on Patreon, or with a direct donation via PayPal or Bitcoin, that is very much appreciated as well, the links are below. As always, please like this video and subscribe, and if you have any ideas for future content, or just want to say hello, please leave a comment.